Welcome to the NBS Show Reviews and Discussion Podcast. I am your host, Norman Sanjo. Today is Silver Quill. Ah, mi familia. Can I borrow 20 bucks? <laughs> no, no. And also joining us today is Sapphire Heart Song. Ah, mi familia. Can I have beer? As you are the familia. <laughs> you are of age now. Yeah! <laughs> Welcome to the era of inebriation. <laughs> I don't uh, know what that means, but yeah! I'll have an Irish coffee. Ah! Uh, well, or maybe tequila, because it'd be more appropriate for today's episode. That's racist! <laughs> oh boy. So, hey, would you way. rather have me say a margarita? That would also be appropriate. <laughs> Ooh, bring me two pina coladas. Oh boy. So, then, you. in today's episode, we are going to review this is Pixar 2017 movie. Coco. So, what is this movie all about? Uh, Coco is a Disney Pixar musical film, fantasy film centered around the Day of the Dead. Uh, Coco is Pixar's 19th feature film and was released on November 22nd, 2017 for Z World and October 27th for Mexico. So, yes, very special. So anywho, uh, in this one, we're not going to go for scene-by-scene scene review because this is a movie, and a one hour and 50 plus minute movie. So we are going to go by teams, and uh, since I'm very bad at teams, we have decided to write things down for a bit, uh, highlighting topics that we want to talk about and discuss on them. So probably you should consider this as a discussion podcast, I think. But anywho, um, before we head into set topics, Silver, how do you feel about this movie? What do you think? Uh, first impressions and all. Oh, oh, I adore it. Absolutely adore it. It's just this great story with these wonderful characters, this beautifully vibrant setting, and you can tell that there's just a lot of love uh, put into it. In fact, it's kind of funny. A part of their anti-piracy campaign, they show how much the animators worked on just creating this this day of the dead world or you know this afterlife mm -hmm. and it's like you don't want to steal from these hard-working animators do you do you yar yes me won't be stealing it anymore yar yar i'd be giving up my pirate in ways yar your brightly lit city has changed me heart arr. Uh, c -c 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 <laughs> but it's a it's was a beautiful movie i loved all the characters loved the message went to see it again and made sure to bring both my parents with me. Oh, that's and they, awesome. they too fell in love. The only thing I truly did not enjoy was the frozen short before it. The frozen short. Disney was wise. They yanked that from the theaters and they had just the Coco showing. At one point, my family was, was telling friends, Oh, go see this movie, but arrive about half an hour late so you can <laughs> skip that god awful Frozen short. I, I heard that there was a riot in Mexico when Frozen was on screen before Coco. A riot? Jeez. Yeah, like. Damn. Bottles of, of Molotov cocktails were flying about, death on the streets and whatnot. Probably I'm high over exaggerating this, but all I heard I was. I think so. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't watch it, but I agree. <laughs> and funny yeah, enough, I, I didn't get to see it on theaters, unfortunately. Uh, in ways, I'm kind of glad I didn't. But yeah, kind of glad. <laughs> and funny enough that you mentioned uh, half an hour late. I did that somehow, not knowing about the Frozen short. <laughs> but still, it was still a fun movie. But I think we are all in agreement that we really, really love this movie. Oh, oh by the way, this. Uh, discussion podcast is thanks here by myself. Like, thank you for sponsoring us on the Patreons, my friend. So, anywho, um, yeah, let's get right into it. So, I've write up a few things here and there, and Silver, you did too. And I guess we'll touch upon them when we can. So, I'm gonna go for my first one here using the Day of the Living Dead or Dia des Muertos. As the team for the story is pretty interesting, even though it's not the first to do so. I think the Book of Life did it first kind of scenario. They did. <clears throat> Although they both tackle the topic of the Day of the Dead, I don't think it's a fair comparison. They're both very uniquely stylized and with very different stories. 
and goals. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I kind of find it interesting because I, I'm not sure if you guys agree with me on this or not, but using a quote-unquote holiday from a another country as your story is pretty interesting because as for me as for a Malaysian we don't truly understand what does Day of the Living Dead mean because it's a holiday that doesn't really cross over to us we don't really get it and so I I as for one don't really understand it but after watching this movie I kind of get a general idea of what it is well I, I can't say I totally understand it myself Part of this movie and Book of the Dead was the emphasis that... Book of ne- Life. Book of Life. You said Book of the Dead. Wow. <laughs> Book of the Dead. Well, you know, there we have those. But Book of Life all touched on this, that it's this philosophy of the afterlife and your, your presence as long as someone remembers you. Now, Coco has the final death. Uh, Book of Life has... A sort, not quite hell, but it's a, it's a place where they're forgotten. And I'm curious how that really plays into the culture. Because I'm an outsider looking in, and I don't know all the facts. Hmm, all right, all right. Seppi, what are your thoughts on this? Thoughts on what? You never even asked me my thoughts on the movie. Oh, well, I, I thought when you when we were <laughs> talking about it, you, you jumped in and <laughs> kind of, well, we, we, you know... Uh, so, yeah, well, what are your thoughts on the movie? The movie is beautiful. It made me cry. And I want... And and I like the plot twist, even though it was super cliched. But it worked for this movie. And I can't help but love it. Anyways. I also kind of sort of got, like, some simple messages throughout the movie. But I felt like, you know... It feels like one of those things where it's like you have to be part of this culture in order to understand, but in a way it doesn't feel like that. Like, there are some things that I don't understand as much based on the movie itself. Like, if I wanted to learn more about uh, DS... Forgive me for those uh, watching, I am way too white to pronounce anything correctly, unless it's Chinese, because I somehow learned that. (laughs) Yes, Mos Muertos? I, I can't pronounce it. I'm sorry. Dia de los Muertos. Gertrude. See, he's whiter than I am, and he can pronounce it just fine. That's how bad I am. I beg your pardon, Steffi. You I... said on multiple occasions how you're whiter than me. <laughs> yes, I was about to say I'm the whitest of whitiness. <laughs> yes. I'm the mega white. Oh, I'm the me... white out. Uh, they see me hating. They see me rolling. They see me whiten. Uh, because, because I'm white and nerdy. <laughs> oh, boys. Just Anyways. Point is, white. Anyways. Boys, <laughs> no. Uh, but, but, yeah. I, I was kind of left confused on, like, some uh, cultural aspects. But other than that, I, I think I got, like, a basic understanding of it. it. It's been a while since I've seen the movie, though. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. I, I just find it interesting. Like, using uh, the Day of the Living Dead is... Fun and interesting, like it's like doing a movie all about Halloween. Yeah, like that's never been done before. <laughs> this is Halloween. This is Halloween. 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 <laughs> uh, you know, the only thing I would associate with like the Day of the Dead in this case, like and Halloween, would mm. be the sugar skulls that they have. What's that? The, you know, the sugar skulls. It's oh. where they paint faces to look. Or uh, sometimes have, I think, just decorative skulls. But they're so beautifully colorful, they call them, we call them sugar skulls. Oh, okay. No, they actually are made of sugar. Really? Some, That's some, candy. Some of them, nice. like, depending on which one you pick then. All right. And talking about the colors and whatnot, uh, on to my second point is the visuals of the movie are very colorful and the celebration that is taking uh, inspiration from. Like, you would have thought that, oh... Um, dead stuff. Oh, it's all going to be doom and gloom, black and gray, a lot of mute tones. But no, nah, it's very colorful. It is very, very colorful. And upon doing a Google search for the Ades Muertos, it is very, uh, it is a very colorful holiday. Well, I'm doing a couple searches right now 
and some of the photos, like of uh, the skeleton statue, beautiful clothing, but I, the uh, the face or the skull, it's like, oh, that's a little, that's a little creepy for me. True, but it's their tradition, and it works for them. I just, well, oh wait, it's on Disneyland. I don't know how serious this is. <laughs> Yeah, I'd probably go for I was gonna call this Dia de Muertos. Uh, like if you just go do Google search on that, you can already tell that uh, skulls are prevalent in this, and the colors are all over the place. It's very colorful. It is very colorful, and it's a very I, I won't say happy holiday, but it is very colorful. That's all I can say. I think I'd call it festive. Yes, festive. But anywho. Mm -hmm, of course, mm -hmm. we, we've talked a lot about the holiday. We haven't actually talked about the movie. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm, it, I'm just, it's more uh, like cultural context, I guess, that we're doing. Yeah, yeah that, that's why I'm pointing it out. Trying, because, trying to understand. Yeah. And like I mentioned before, I, I've kind of list down the things that I thought were talking points. Uh, you know, if uh, Seppi, if you have anything, just add it to the list. So, yes. And uh, I got nothing. And yeah, I, I'm how to put this. I am not hundred percent sure what to else to say because for me this is a very foreign holiday, and the movie itself takes inspiration from this. Is cool, like using uh, almost neon tone colors for its movie is fun. Yeah, and the depiction of the afterlife. I mean, right from the the flower petal bridge. To seeing this beautifully lit city, uh, it's breathtaking. I was like, oh, they went all out on this and they did a fantastic job. I, I think they put the life in afterlife. <laughs> you know, we tend to really stuck up fear of the, the idea of the hereafter. And here's this thing saying, look, here, it's beautiful. It's lively. It's filled with vitality all its own. I love the scene where the, the matriarch of the, of the family, the, the great grandmother, she can't get in, so she's saying to the the uh, kind of the afterlife customs agent, "Your devil box is wrong. <laughs> Your devil box is wrong." Oh yeah, what? yeah. yeah they, they uh they won't uh, let her. They true. can't let her pass the, pass over the bridge because her photo is not on the mantelpiece. Yeah, or well, there's a special shrine term for it. Yeah, I think familia. I forgot what they call it. Well, familia is family, so prob maybe, but. She's just saying, no, the, my family always puts my photo up. Your devil box is wrong. <laughs> right? And just like, okay, well, we got her character down right away. I know exactly what she's on about. Yep, yep. I'm going to stir it to the movie now because uh, we've we'll been talking about what I want to talk about. So, Silva, so, uh, what do you have to say, man? Like, uh, steer us into the right direction. All right. Well, let's talk about the central conflict, which is surprisingly not until the end. It's, it's not about beat the bad guy. In fact, for a good while, there is no bad guy. There's just a young man's desire to live his life, his family's pressure to conform, and a, a unwillingness to give ground either way. And that's the driving force for a good chunk of the movie. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I, I, I enjoyed that. I was like, okay, there is conflict. It doesn't require necessarily a villain, but I'm invested. I'm curious. I want them to succeed because at the start of the movie they really go out of the way to make the family likable maybe the siblings are a little bit annoying but you know no oh, this family i think that yeah what, that's what family. siblings aren't annoying i would huh? know i am the young sibling <laughs> as am i but then maybe the movie loses it just a little when they do introduce a villain someone to blame the misfortune that split this family apart and while he is an enjoyable villain, uh, especially I love the scenes where uh, he's in, he thinks the main character is his son, uh, great grandson, mm -hmm. and he's introducing to everyone. And <laughs> I hope you will die soon. <laughs> what? You know what I mean. <laughs> you know what I mean. But then it becomes all about beating him and saving the day. And it's like, I liked more, more the, the familial, familial conflict. conflict. I don't know if we really needed a bad guy, no matter how enjoyable. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I mean, I, to me, that feels like it ties the whole movie together where uh, the family has to work together to achieve a goal. 
Well, and Hector is uh, is just a, such a likable character. I like seeing him be betrayed by his idol Ernesto, but at the same time, it's just the the hook for me was hit was this quest for identity and self determination, and uh, it, it just means a lot. It meant a lot, especially I I was tearing up at the end when he's trying to get Grandma Coco to remember her father and singing that song. Mm-hmm. And it's like. Twice or what? What was I doing twice? Were Were you like uh, crying twice, or was it just like? Oh, I was getting emotional both times. <laughs> what you played the you played the opening montage to up, and I'll still tear up. Oh yeah, every time, yeah. every time. I I just acknowledge it's sad. I can't really tear up. That's just how I've always been. The villain does bring up the the topic of the hidden villain. It seems to be a big thing, especially in Disney movies. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm guessing what the hidden villain is kind of the new trope now for Disney. Yeah, I think Atlantis: The Lost Empire was one of the earliest examples of this idea. Really, that was kind of <laughs> red flag for a while now. Like, yeah, I mean, it's there. Well, at first, he's just the the respectable, uh, the leader. He wants to he wants to get his crew alive. He's sort of the grand leader. And then, oh, wait, no, he's, I forgot. These guys are mercenaries. They're in it for the money. Why did I forget this? It, maybe he was red flag, but it's, he's more than the usual mustache twirling, yeah, ha, ha, kind of villain we, we kind of expect. I, I, I get what you mean. But in all honesty, uh, him as the villain or, <laughs> sorry, folks, we are talking about Atlantis for a bit. Uh, him as the villain kind of stays like, Okay, I we come in peace, but I think the elder says, "Oh, you say you come in peace, but you have a peace on you. So how peaceful are you?" Oh, do you want a piece of my peace? <laughs> I'll blow you to pieces. <laughs> but still, uh, it does say a lot. Yes, and I I find it very interesting where uh, we're using the hidden villain kind of trope now, which is interesting. Mm-hmm. I mean, or maybe it's the never meet your heroes idea. I mean, mm. now you want to talk. I said up made me cry. Well, up had a character who was the hero, the hero of the main character, but he turned out to be the villain. Although there was really no doubt. Yeah, but in all honesty, uh, for up, he's he wasn't really <laughs> how to put this. He wasn't really stated or pointed out to be the villain, but his goals were. Uh, contradicting to our lead hero's goal. So, yeah, had to fight. But anywho, uh, I did love that for, for a time, the, the real antagonist was, what was his name, Pepe? Pepe, you mean uh, the... Pepe, Pepe. The spirit animal. Oh, yeah, I, I guess so, Pepe. Coco Pepe. Let's see. I do a search and I get Coco Pepe pasta. What? Uh, Pepita. Pepita, there you go. Because Pepita, at first, it's this bright, colorful creature, but it is threatening as can be. Yeah. I mean, you you see, here's my philosophy on how we come up with most mythical creatures. You take something that's already scary on its own. Uh, I don't know if Pepita is, is modeled after a, a cougar or a panther, some form of giant cat. Uh, I'm trying to look for it, and... Uh, physical appearance is crossed between a jaguar, an eagle, and several uh, several other animals. Is this card? <laughs> wait, wait, what? What? A cross between a jaguar, 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 okay. and an eagle, and several other animals, including the teal horn of a ram and the striped iguana-like tail. Yes. Well, my my philosophy with uh, how we come up with mythical creatures is: you take something scary like a jaguar. Something you wouldn't want to tangle with, mm-hmm. on, even on a good day. And then how how can you add parts to make it worse? Because what's worse than a jaguar? A flying jaguar. <laughs> oh, that's not scary enough? Let's give it talons so it can pluck you out of the off the ground while it keeps in the air. That's pretty scary. And you know what? Let's add some iguana parts because iguanas freak me out. <laughs> yeah. And, and this thing, it's chasing them for, for such a... For a good chunk of the movie, it's the most immediate antagonist. And yet, once Ernesto reveals his true colors, uh, it's like their greatest ally. 
you see it prowling through the curtain after they've rescued everyone going after Ernesto's like, oh, you in trouble? Yep. And also at the same time, too, um, if you notice after they rescue Miguel, uh, you can see that uh, Pepita is kind of nuzzling uh, Miguel. So it's like, oh, you're not that bad. It's like, ah, it's a good kid. He's a good kid. Who's a good master of city? Yes, you are. Ooh. Uh, but yeah, besides that, uh, the music. The music's awesome. Oh, I love the music. And I like Remember the thing. Remember me. Though I have to say goodbye. Remember, Remember me. me. Although, not, not to be a downer because I too love the music. But it's kind of funny that it switches between English and Spanish. When? Uh, be- oh, many times. Uh, Un poco loco. Oh, that one. So you're talking about? Yes, uh, yes. That's good. Remember me if I rem- if I'm right was it was only in English as far as I know. And then the ending thing, which is my favorite, uh, my proud corazón. Yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. Proud corazón. I do like that they blended English and Spanish, though. The logistical part of me saying, well, if this is taking part in this culture, it's probably all Spanish and it's only been translated English for us. Mm-hmm. Oh, boy. <laughs> no comment on that one. Yeah. But, in, in all honesty, um, it's, <laughs> how do I put it? It's like, yes, the movie itself, if you really, 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 really want to be anal about it, you should go, probably go watch it in Spanish to... Uh, get the full feel of the movie, but the problem uh, is, I, I, I just try to kick that part of my brain. Yeah, that's true. But like I said, um, but in all honesty, do you want to read subtitles if you don't really understand Spanish? It's like si. watching an anime. Oh, estoy muy triste. <laughs> uh, pues. Por qué? <laughs> Did you take Spanish? In- um, school? So, solo un poquito. <laughs> uh, me no understand. <laughs> I thought you took French. Guess que say? <laughs> oh, boys. But anyway, yes. Um, the, the music's awesome, but the melding of English and Spanish words together tends to get confusing. Just a little. But it's it also is kind of the fun. True, true. I mean, uh, if we're going to bring up anime, anime often mentions as English phrases just because it sounds cool. There's no, usually there's no deeper meaning. Oh, true, true, yeah. true, true. So it's the same thing here, except in this case, it's the reversal, I think. We, the uh, primarily English audience, or, or at least here in the States, an English audience, we find it so fun to hear the words in Spanish. True that. And especially... Un poco loco. That that one was a really fun song to listen to. The beats, the uh, tempo. It was really fun. And also just hear the excitement, the exuberance of the of the cries, the eyes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That, that one was fun too. And also, uh, since we're on this bandwagon of talking about fun songs, uh, what was it again? The the world is uh, the world is mi familia. That one was a fun song too. There we go. Sefi, what was your favorite song? Um, the the clock... I, I liked two songs particularly. I liked Un Poco Loco, and I also liked uh, the lullaby version of Remember Me. Yeah, th- those are high on the list too. Those are my two favorite. I, I didn't really listen to the other ones. <laughs> the villain song made me mad, like... Actually, no. It was the uh, the wife song. Like, it didn't make me mad, but I just didn't really get as invested into it because un poco loco. It's super fun. It makes you feel good, and uh, you know the the lullaby version of "Remember Me" tears you up. I didn't like the you know festive version that Ernesto de la Cruz mm. was uh was using throughout the film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, my preference was more towards the, uh, you know, oh, the lullaby, lullaby yeah. version because of the sentimental value. But come on, Ed, 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 you smiled when that bell crushed him the first time. <laughs> no. It's just like, yeah, he's dead. You you didn't really um, thought that. Like, at first you thought, like, oh, no, oh, that's, 
uh, harsh way to go. Oof. But there's well, also... my, my first thoughts were, well then, that's an odd way to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> well, it looks like he got wrung out. <laughs> Ask not for whom the bell tolls. <laughs> oh, are we playing Metallica now? Why not? For whom the bell, bell tolls. tolls. And I haven't heard that song forever. Time rushes on, on. Uh, but besides the music, besides the music, um, what else can we talk about? Because it is fascinating. This movie is fascinating. I, I have a lot of here. Yes. But Silver, well, let's see. Go, why don't you talk about me? Why don't you talk about me? Because my quote unquote, uh, which I'm going to call this um, list here, sometimes doesn't really relate to the movie. <laughs> well, characters are such a big part of this. I, I think I accidentally mixed up that it, Hector is the, the father or, you know, the great grandfather who's, uh, who's down on his luck, even in the afterlife. And it's Miguel. Who's the child. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And Miguel is such a likable kid. I mean, he's energetic. He's how to describe this. He's not selfish in the sense that you think, Oh, you little brat show some empathy, mm -hmm. but he's asking all the right questions about growing up. He's uh, struggling to, Find, pursue what he loves against what his family is trying to push. Yeah, and there and the nice thing is that even though the family is, I think more in the wrong, they're not cruel. It's just they've been raised a certain way. They want to support him. They want him to do well, and they want to, him to know how much he's loved. And that comes through in the family in the afterlife, even with the super harsh. Uh, great, great what was it, Mama? I forget her name though. Uh, was it let me see. Mama, it, Emilida. Uh, I you know so. the, the grandma. Yeah, yeah. Your devil box <laughs> is wrong, Emilida. No, 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 no. I'm talking about the uh, the daughter of uh, what's her name? Coco. Oh, the... yeah, Coco. What? The the daughter of Mama Coco, who's in the beginning of the film and hits people with a sandal. <laughs> oh yeah. I... Abuelita. Yeah, Abuelita. Yeah, she well, she's fun too. I mean, she's the most outspoken and harshest of tone. Oh yeah. But it but but she also shows this affection. So you never really hate them for having a different view. You just realize that they're doing it out of love, but love can be mis love can be misleading. Yeah, I mean, what is love anyway? Baby, don't hurt me. Don't hurt don't me. Hurt me. No more. <laughs> Bam, 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 bam. Well, great. Now I've got the idea of the cast of Coco doing that head bob. <laughs> yeah. But no, uh, like every character here you can relate to because um, they could be a part of your family. Like who here is? Uh, uh, Grandma Abulita. She is one of those overprotective grandmothers who will pinch your cheeks and give you kisses and uh, hug you or give you snuggles in boobs. Oof. No, but really? Did you oh, not see that? Listening. Oh, I'm well aware, but really, yes. there's some things you just don't call attention to, my dear boy. <laughs> but you, you remember the scene where she, I think she chases off Dante and she threw the slipper away and she just tells me, girl, go, go get my slippers. <laughs> 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 that, is, uh, that is just good. Which is kind of funny. You know, we learn later that the dog what the dog really is. Uh, the dog is it's still like, a dog. Like, I don't know. <laughs> it doesn't really explain how he transformed or how he got onto the bridge. Well, he he always was. It's just, he's a very peculiar one. Yes. In that he, his dog side really shows through. I guess even he can, even he forgets. And, uh, but I love that, that she took such issue with it. On some level, did she know? <laughs> did she sense it? Who, uh, Abudita or? Uh, yeah, Abudita. When she throws, you're throwing, you're throwing your sandals at a divine being. You're gonna, you're gonna get in trouble for that sooner or later. Uh, I mean, uh, each person has their uh, spirit animal, and I think Dante is Miguel's spirit animal. Poor kid got a very quirky spirit animal. Yeah, why not, right? I mean, <laughs> I'm a dog person, but even I would say I'd like Pepito for my spirit animal. Thank you very much. <laughs> Uh, but no, um, b besides that, like uh, the spirits animal are cool. Um, they they kind of explain it in the movie a bit, so that's fun to see. And what else? Uh, I I'm trying to remember. 
the uncles, like uh, the, the fam- Okay, uh, I think we're not really touching on it, but family does matter in this movie. Like their the, the team of family, I, I I highly enjoyed it. Like when you get to see the family interact with the lead character and not just be throwaway characters. There's always a fun time. Uh, a good example of this is DC Comics Blue Beetle. Uh, I, I forget what's his name. But yeah, the, the main character, the Blue Beetle. Oh, sorry? Jaime Reyes. Yes, yeah, Jaime Reyes. Instead of hiding it from the family, the family knows and works together with him. So that is fascinating. Fascinating. I know. You don't see that dynamic. And could you just imagine if... For example, Spider-Man in some reboot of some shape or form where Aunt May knows who Spider-Man is and she kind of worries about him but understands the nature of his powers and begrudgingly allows him to do what he needs to do and also supports him in ways that other Aunt Mays can't do. Well, funny enough, we actually did have that uh, for a time in the comics. Aunt May learned that Peter Parker is Spider-Man. Then she got shot. Then we had one more day, and I got mad. <laughs> I think you and many, especially Linkara. Uh, I would have a rage off with Linkara. Who hates this more? <laughs> uh, <Oof>. Yeah. <laughs> uh, erp, erp, erp. To be fair, I didn't say it at all at, during the last podcast, this so I'm, I'm learning. Uh, yes, I'm very proud of you for that, but I was still hold... To the tradition. True, 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 true. So, so is this going to become a point where during BabsCon you're actually going to say, okay, and your bill comes down to <laughs> blah, 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 and actually charge me? Why not, right? <laughs> Maybe. Yeah, I'm not paying you. <laughs> you can't make me. Oh. Oh. You are not the IRS, son. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, carrying on, by, by, by getting back on track. So, we... We talk about the family team for this movie, and this fam- the, the the team for family for this movie is really fun. It's awesome. It makes you want to appreciate your own family. And like Silver did, he brought his parents to watch the movie. Yay! And they told everyone to ar- arrive late because we didn't like that stupid Frozen short. No, I won't let this go. Why do you ask? And that's one of the other reasons why I won't be playing Kingdom Hearts 4 or 3. Aww. Oh, hey! If I can do Hundred Acre Wood, you can do, uh, f- you can do a Frozen level. Oh. Just let it go. Oh God! <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just you, you saying Hundred Acre Wood reminds me of the hassle of me playing it. And here's the thing: I I wanted to get more content out of it, and I played the Japanese version, the final mix, just to get everything. And playing that level in Japanese where you don't understand anything is does, doesn't help. Doesn't help. In Coco, I mean, I love uh, one of the uncles who looks at uh, Miguel and says, oh, I miss having a nose. <laughs> yeah. I mean, those character quirks are fun. They're fun and lighthearted. Yeah. Uh, I will admit that while the family is, is fun, they're, they are still sort of, they are ancillary to uh, to Abuelita and, uh, and Mama Imelda. Yeah. And I'm really bad at, rem- at saying these names oh. Imelda. Yeah. yeah they they are they're present but they're not like the central focus. The uh well the drive or the egos of these of these uh leads really demands your attention. Yeah, I mean uh you you can straight away tell uh in the living world uh Abulita is the cornerstone for the family or the yeah, cornerstone for the family. Uh, she is there, she is the support. Everybody goes distant to her. You don't sway from her teachings and whatnot. And some people might say that, oh, it's kind of nice for her to, what do you call this, uh, invite uh, Miguel to the family business by making shoes now. But in some shape or form, that is very calculative where, oh, uh, we will stop you from doing the musics by uh, watching you 24-7. Well, you know, they're just looking out for his souls. Yeah, true that. Ha ha. <laughs> but um, oh, I I think Safi got it before you, Norman. Yep. I definitely got it. Yep, yep. Got, got me there. At the same time, too, in the world of the dead, uh, you you got uh, 
Mama Emilda. And she doesn't like the music too. So it's like, hmm. Well, she does, but she doesn't want to admit to it. Yeah. and I love that. I love that scene where she sings through the gate. Yeah. yeah. Just to try and just to try and get Miguel to listen to her for half a second. Yeah. And that's like going back to the conflict and the, the push between families. That's part of what makes this so great. The, uh, no one listens. The kid feels like no one's listening to him. So he doesn't listen to them. Kind of like brave. It's this message of family communication. And I guess even as far back as the little mermaid, little mermaid is a bit off because kids a brat. Oh, Oh, Norman, not holding back. Yeah, no, ain't. If she just only listen, and if she just only listen, and the father doesn't have a big ego, it won't go that far. But no, I sense repression, Norman. Feed us your rage. <laughs> uh, I, I don't have enough passion. Oh yeah, I do. I hit that level in Kingdom Hearts. God dang it, Kingdom Hearts too. <laughs> uh, uh, want to do a musical uh, rhythm game thingy, but it was so cheap. Like God dang it, yeah. Norman. Anyway. <laughs> Uh, Do you need more therapy, Norman? This is therapy. <laughs> Nor- Norman must drink a goblet of mermaid blood. <laughs> oh, no. But now, um, getting back on Coco. So, family is the central point of the movie. But uh, let's move it to the villains. Like, what do you think of uh, De La Cruz? Well, he's a charming villain. I mean, you know, he's he's... He puts forth this bigger than life persona. And so you can't help it. I think you can not help but be a little charmed by him. Mm-hmm. And of course, the, again, that wonderful line it is wonderful to see you. I hope you die soon. <laughs> uh, yeah. The, that line there is, wasn't meant to be um, not menacing. What's the word I'm looking for? Bad? Threatening? No, not even threatening. Villainous? It, it wasn't meant um, ill willed. But, uh, you know, when you're dead for a few years now, and, oh, okay, um, oh, sorry, didn't, I didn't mean that way. Um, you know what I mean. <laughs> there you go. The, the Being dead really affects your social skills. I don't know of how course to, it does. <laughs> I don't know how to talk to you, you living people. The, the noses just throw me off. Here's a fun fact about, not really fun fact about De La Cruz, but here's a fun tidbit or fun, which we'll call this, um, Note I, I I notice because um, De La Cruz is inspired by uh, who now uh, Pedro Infante Jorge. Now, there's a few people that he was, was inspired from, but in Malaysia we have this uh, legendary actor named Piramli, and he is kind of one of one of the first few actors who was really what you call this popular and really out there and you know he is legendary he you can attribute him to be how you call this um charlie chaplin and so on oh and this guy here um, i'm just gonna send you guys to the wiki page and once you see how he looks you'll get what i mean and you can understand why uh bring him up and that's not the picture on the discord uh, you have to scroll down a bit ah although i don't know if i if i were one of these legendary performers that ernesto's model after it's like wait you modeled the killer after me hey uh you know what i, I think that was a bit slow so yeah here it is there you go it looks like a that fellow also looks like a charmer he is does he look like a cruise Maybe a little, something about that mustache. <laughs> yeah. And yeah, he is a very popular actor. He has charm. He has charisma. He is, uh, well, quote unquote, De La Cruz. He, he can sing. He can act. And yeah, he, let's just say he's legendary in Malaysia. Well, there you go. Yep. So yeah, <laughs> seeing this movie was, oh, wow. Uh, that's almost like him. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'd be like, hey, don't, don't model the killer after me. <laughs> oh. I tried to be nice. <laughs> But um, De La Cruz here is an interesting villain. You, you did mention about uh, him being the hidden villain and whatnot. I, 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 th- I think you even stated it down on your things to talk about, which is hidden villain Disney themes and whatnot. Yeah. He technically wasn't the villain until the very end where, oh, 
curse us. I would have gotten away if it weren't for you, kids. Well, he's now being forgotten, so he's condemned to the final death. True that, true that. Although, although, what was it? Hector said, uh, well, I am probably doing a huge disservice to the, to the Spanish language. He did say we all make that journey at some point. Mm, true, true. Yes, he did mention that. So, I don't know, sometimes you can only delay the inevitable. But there's actually a quote from um, uh, Joseph Campbell that applies to Hector. Mm-hmm. And funny enough, it, it's about the devil. Oh. Because uh, you, you look at where he is in Coco, and he had a life of fame and fortune, an afterlife of fame and fortune. You may feel like, well, even if he's forgotten, you know, he won for a good chunk of time. But there's a saying Campbell says about the devil and other tricksters, malefics, and, you know, wrongdoers. They win in the short term, in the, in the immediate temporal limited world. But in the grand scheme, they're always the loser. True. That no matter how much short term pleasure they may derive, long, you, you look at the long game and they're adrift. They've lost everything. And I think that's an important message. True that, true that. And at the same time, too, if if, if you really think about um, how this world works, is you will, quote-unquote, live on forever if somebody remembers you. But, well, even, even in a loving family like Miguel's, they only remember about four generations, mm-hmm. maybe five. True. It, it starts wherever it wants to start. And on my point on De La Cruz... Uh, if even, let's just say, uh, he wasn't foiled, let's just say he's still there, uh, even a hundred years later, people will still remember him for what he did. A good example here is, even till now, we all remember who Freddie Mercury is. So he, he's popular in that sense there because he created something. For you know, Michael Jackson too. You want to go even further? Uh, Beethoven. We all remember who he is. <laughs> of course, we also remember Jack the Ripper, Mussolini. Mm-hmm. And also that guy from Germany who was born Austrian. Oh, and Pontius Pilate. <laughs> Who's that? Oh! No, I mean, I thought, I, I thought I'd throw you a curveball and uh, it curved pretty hard. Oh. He's from the Bible. Sorry, I, I didn't read that book. The Bible. The Bible. Nah, oh, man. I, I'm i following the updated version of that book. <laughs> See, I'm just waiting. I'm just waiting to see if lightning will strike normally. <laughs> yeah, like I mentioned before, updated version. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, yeah, people are remembered. There's a question, though, for this afterlife. Mm. If you're remembered not with love, what does that do? Well, De La Cruz, look at him. Well, he w- but he was remembered with love, false love because it was b- all based on a lie. But people did love him uh, until they learned what he really did. Yeah, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. That is a good question, and I don't think we'll get a good answer, or we we'll, won't get a proper answer for it because the way that this world works is already explained. And yeah, I, I don't think so. Like, no, I sorry, I got no answer for you. Well, I mean, I'm, I'd be curious if perhaps a listener who's more familiar with, with the culture and the holiday might enlighten us. Oh, yeah. Please do. If you're listening to this and you haven't been bored with what we're talking about, do comment below and um, enlighten us. Because this is a really good question I want to know. Bored? Norman. Oh, I... How could they be bored? How could they be bored with us? That is huh. true. That is true. We have, <laughs> we have the amazing <laughs> Silver Quill here on. So there's always a fun time. Safi's here too. Yes, true. That Hi. Is fancy. <laughs> Hi, Safi. Hi. <laughs> so, uh, what else? Uh, you, you know, I just enjoy this movie. I mean, there's a lot to talk about, and I'm at a loss. At a loss? Oh, but, but there's... Okay, Norman, did you tear up at the end when he's singing Remember Me to Grandma Coco? Yeah, I remember watching it in the theaters with a friend. And okay... Uh, I, I have to um, pedal back a bit and explain the situation for this one. I usually watch a mov- go watch a movie with a friend of mine. Uh, he's kind of my 
go watch movie buddy because we kind of have the same taste in movies and whatnot. Quote unquote same taste. But when it comes to animated films, he kind of crosses the line there. And if I can bribe him, I will. But is as for Coco, he was not interested and probably busy. He has this stigma about watching Disney movies. So yeah. What? I don't know, man. It's his prerogative. I can say much. But anywho. Um he didn't want to watch it with me, so I had to invite another friend. Fortunately for me, this friend said yes, and we go and watch. <laughs> and like I mentioned before, we were a bit late. We missed all the frozen stuff. If I guess there were any frozen stuff. And we entered the movie about 10 minutes late. So yeah. And watching the movie in the theaters... I teared up because any movie that had family relations as its key story really touches me. So yeah, I, I teared up. I, I cried. I, 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 I won't say I was bawling, but manly tears came out. Although it's funny, when you say my prerogative, that was a song by a band called uh, Millie Vanilli. <laughs> which, which they it was revealed at the very end of their career. Mm-hmm. Short-lived career that they were they were lip singing to someone else's work. Yep, true that. And it's kind of funny that that parallels Ernesto that desire for fame at the price of sincerity. <laughs> uh, yeah, but can't say much because well, <laughs> how do I put this? Um, it's one of those scenarios where ha, I already got your money. <laughs> your money is now my money. <laughs> yep, <laughs> but. It's fun to see justice served, even though, yeah, just justice is served, even in the end for this movie. Yep, a guy who is fueled purely by his own ego, his ego and, and greed. Uh, it is, it's funny, I was talking with a friend who kind of envisioned a villain who, or rather, a story of a villain who said, it doesn't matter if I lose, I had, thousands, I had years of living... As the Supreme, you can't take that away from me. It was like, but the whole point of a villain really is they're driven by ego and a need for the moment. Mm-hmm. When that when that ego stops being fed, when they can't uh when they can't define themselves by that by being on top anymore, it doesn't matter how good a life they had. Actually it just makes their current situation all the more bitter. Mm. Uh, true, true. But at the same time too, it depends on what kind of villain that you're trying to create. Because some villains don't mind bowing out if the situation calls for. Well, but I well, okay, we that could get into a whole different topic. Yeah, true that. But I think a villain like Ernesto. Oh, he's ego. He's purely ego. He's pure ego. He wouldn't be able to say, "Hey, I had a good run, no matter what." He'd be like, "No, I want more of a good run. I want a better run." Yeah, I just want to stay on top, like. Uh, it's it's something similar to what I recently watched. Uh, it's a game called Borderlands. The side story, the what was that Borderlands oh, project? Tales from the Borderlands. Yeah, Tales from the Borderlands. Because uh, in said game, Handsome Jack is still there. Oh, Handsome Jack is always there. I don't know if Borderlands can tell a story without him, but yes, he's a guy who always has to define himself by the here and now mm-hmm. and being on top. And he's all about the ego, like. It doesn't matter how he does it or it doesn't matter how he gets there. He needs to be on top. Like, ego. Ego is driving him. Oh, talking about that, right? Do you know any other villain that drives on ego? Nightmare Mooned? Discord for a time? Uh, let's, try, let's try to get outside. MLP. Outside MLP. Well, Starscream! Just about... Oh, definitely Starscream. <laughs> just about any Star Wars villain. Um... Uh, Really? Because of, as far as I can tell, um, Star Wars has a whiny kid as the villain. Who's all about, he has to be in charge. The thing about the Star Wars villains is that even if it's like Darth Vader who could argue the Jedi had become corrupt mm-hmm. or flawed, he's the one who, he says, I get to decide what's right and wrong. I decide that the Jedi aren't worth it, so I'm going to wipe them out. I am more. I am more qualified and more 
deserving of making this decision than any. Mm. That's the ego. So in that way, it, when, whenever a villain conveys upon themselves more power to decide things for the world, like Magneto, uh, that is an example of ego running rampant. Mm, true, true. But at the same time, too, Magneto is all about justice for the mutant kind. Or vengeance. Yeah, true that, too. Oh, wow, we're, we're all over the place. But it's a good thing well, that X-Men is part of Disney now. <laughs> Uh, yes, it's all Disney. No matter what we do, My Little Boat is the only thing non-Disney at the moment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What about uh, anime? Anime will be, soon be part of Disney too. I'm sure. <laughs> you think you, you think I'm impressed? <laughs> I cr- helped create you. <laughs> oh boys! Okay. You Japanese sissies are now belong to me now. <laughs> Oh boy, no. Goofy, break their legs! <laughs> it's your thing, Mickey. <laughs> I feel utterly disturbed by Norman right now. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, just by Norman? Am I am I no longer shocking? No, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Do I no longer repulse you? <laughs> no, not really. Oh, I've become like South Park. People just expect it. <laughs> and so it's not shocking anymore. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, anyway, I, I think we've died. I think we've gone on for long now. And yeah, um, we enjoy Coco. Coco has a lot of things to talk about. And honestly, if we were to go scene by scene, probably we'll be much more focused. But where's the fun in that, right? Well, we'd also just be checking points off a list. I kind of like this free form. Yeah, true, true, true. And we get to talk about what we like. I mean, the movie villain is, I say, he's very, very fascinating. I I highly enjoy him. And the lead heroes, they're fun. They're they're not the normal type of heroes that you would see. Oh, boys. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, who's here excited for the live action Mulan? Eh. Look, the whole live action thing. Oh, great. Give it 10 years and they'll try to do a live action Coco. Oh, God, no. Please don't. Except that it'll all be CG because of the, you know, afterlife setting. Oh, which, oh, wow. Isn't that what this movie is? I know. <laughs> I mean. Well, they haven't made a live action. To- they haven't made a live action Pixar movie yet, so. Yeah. They've got to do a live action Lion King. I mean. Oh. It- it's lions! I know. And then soon they're going to be a life action Zootopia. Oh, tell Race Best. <laughs> See how he reacts. <laughs> well. Secret confession. I've never watched the full Mulan movie. Really? No, it's one of the... <gasps> sli- it slipped through the gap on me. Oh, okay. You need to watch it! We're going to make you watch it! <laughs> oh, oh, I see this. Have you seen all the Indiana Jones movies yet? I've never seen one. That, well, see? See? I'm not interested in that, though. <laughs> oh, oh, well, Seppi. Oh, the excuses. Seppi, uh, you, you, you just started a war with Silver. I've started the film wars. <laughs> I oh. haven't seen a single Star Wars movie either. F- really? Mm. Yes. Film wars. These are the film wars. You know what, Seppi? You can't out-film me. <laughs> you know, you... I haven't seen many properties. You know what? I, I think we're going to do something Star Wars in the future here now. <laughs> yeah, I'm not going to watch it. Can't make me. Oh, you'd be amazed, Taffy. Mm-hmm. I'll just yeah, have a. You can't watch me. I can watch you. You're on YouTube. <laughs> but uh, but I could have a word with Mr. Scorcher and say you shouldn't let her do any graphics until <laughs> she draws a specific scene from Star Wars. <laughs> Fine by me. I get a break in a vacation. Be sure that's during December, though, when you say that. I'll have it You're in not the not mi- be here. I'll have it done in the middle of, of, of summer 2019. <laughs> oh, evil, evil. But anywho, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, get the on track. Well, no, wait, I'm, huh? we're starting a war here. I'm, I'm tempted to bring, to announce this to Twitter and have them <laughs> start the uh, Sapphire War song. Oh, wow. Well, okay, oh, you know what? Goodness. You know what? Do it. <laughs> Bring it on, old man. It was fun the last time around. <sighs> well, I don't know. I think I'm still on Safi's bad side <laughs> for the last... Bring years. it on! Kisu, kisu. <laughs> I hate you. <laughs> See? So, yeah, so, anyway, anyway, anyway. Um, we enjoy Coco. Uh, we highly recommend go watching it. It is going to be 
a fun and emotional ride and it will make you appreciate your familia. Just skip the Frozen pro- short beforehand. Yeah. That's all I ask. Yeah. But what if you want to see the Frozen short? <laughs> then there's something wrong with you. <laughs> hey, bro, bro, <laughs> Silver, Silver, um, don't go knocking what you don't uh, understand because people might find us strange. Dude, I celebrate that we're strange. Yes. What are you talking about that I don't understand? I saw the Frozen movie. I get that Frozen is a big to-do, mm-hmm. but it's not even as charming as the movie. It's just, it, even the humor was... Blackluster? Well, mean-spirited. You have uh, Olaf going through and hearing all these traditions that are in part based on Santa Claus, and he puts the most comedic misinterpretation. Breaking and entering is fine on Christmas. Uh, and th- but and you, for a moment you think, yeah, that's kind of funny. We we celebrate a guy breaking into our homes, <laughs> but then you realize that you've you've completely ignored the spirit and the the celebration of this heartfelt gesture. And while the execution may sound kind of silly, Olaf's completely missing that. All right, and it's just like you know what, you're kind of an ass. <laughs> so Silver, go, so- go to summer. <laughs> I want you to melt. So, so who, that's right. Uh, who uh, did it worse, like in terms of missing the mark on Christmas? Is it um, what well, Olaf in this Frozen special or Jack Skellington? Well, Jack Skellington was trying to get into the spirit and uh, actually was more enchanted with it. So I'd say Olaf got it worse. <laughs> but the real, but the real missing the point was Christmas with the cranks. See, I could go on about terrible Christmas movies or shorts. <laughs> oh my goodness! Yeah. So, oh my goodness. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so we're, we're gonna, gonna have, have a very sappy Christmas where we tie her down and force her to watch all the Star Wars movies. Oh, you was, can't uh, make me. All, all nine is the one. I'm not gonna be here during Christmas. Ha 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 ha. Well, all nine, Norman. I'd make her watch Ewoks. <laughs> Even the holiday special. Yes. <laughs> Yes. Oh, boy. Yeah, Tell you what, during BabsCon, you can do it. You can do it. But no, you you cannot make me watch Star Wars so, any other so time. You, you do know where yeah. she's going, right, for Christmas? Actually, I don't. Ah, she's going to be hanging out with her uh, Kisu Kisu. Oh, excellent. I'll talk to Manga Comics. Yes. Manga, she really wants to see <laughs> Star Wars while she's with you. No. <laughs> no. And the holiday special. No. Okay, I'm missing on him on Skype right now. No! He doesn't use Skype, so ha! Well, then I have to take it public to Twitter. Oh, no. Well. What have I done? Hey. I'll message him privately on Twitter. There we go. No, go ahead. Do it publicly. I dare you. You dare me? I dare you. First it is... MBS show. The yeah, show. We have an assignment for Manga Common and Anime Christie. You must get her to watch all the Star Wars movies during Christmas. This bonus points if you include the Ewok movies and the holiday special. Then bring me a sample of her tears. Uh huh. Yeah, not gonna happen. I'll leave that last part out, but I'll leave it at the holiday special. (laughs) Stir, whip, 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 stir, woo! (laughs) There you go. Tweet has been sent. (laughs) What have I done? Uh huh. (laughs) Unfollow. (laughs) (laughs) What have I done? So, anywho, yes, yes, yes. Go, go, fun movie, go watch. <sighs> yes, so oh, there you go. The The assignment has been has been <laughs> given. The dare has been met. <laughs> Don't blame me, Safi, that if you get a, a load of Star Wars thrown at you <laughs> all at once. <laughs> Safi! Don't watch it! <laughs> watch this movie, Safi! <laughs> Have it with some taffy! I thought of a rhyme. Da, 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 da. So, anywho, yes, um, Silver, any, any more to add to Coco? Oh, we're talking about Coco, are we? 
Uh, just that I, I love this movie. I, I have it here at my home. I love watching it with my family. And it's really, it's a, a taste of another culture that I, I think is done respectfully and with great adoration. And so that's one of the most wonderful aspects about it. Yeah. I, and while there are parts that I can kind of, I can quibble over, like, you know, the hidden villain, there's nothing I don't like. Everything, even the stuff that's a little, eh, is still fun. So I'd heartily recommend it to anyone. Mm-hmm. And yeah, I, I do agree with you, Silver, that uh, having the other culture as the team is very interesting. Like I mentioned before, uh, not knowing about uh, what you call this holiday again, uh, Dia de Muertos. Dia de Muertos. Yes, is very fascinating yes. for me. Like, uh, honestly, I would like to see other cultures being done like, in this in this fashion. Maybe something from China, maybe something from Japan, and maybe something from my neck of the woods. It would be really interesting to see what uh, Disney Pixar could do with my own culture. Mm. But, Seppi, what about you? My thoughts on Coco yes. overall? Yes. Enjoyable film. Go watch it. 10 out of 10, a little cliched, but other than that, it's a fantastic film. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Oh, uh, on a short note, guys, um, any movie this year touch you as Coco did? Mm. No. Mm, there are movies that have triggered a emotional attachment, but for different reasons. Mm. Case in point, First Man. Uh-oh, all right. All right. For me, none, none, none really. I mean, I've watched a few films here and there. And uh, nothing hit me like Coco that got me into tears. Tears of joy, probably. Deadpool 2. <laughs> Let's see here. Oh, well, if, if you want tears, there's there's the Predator. <laughs> oh, my God, this movie. It's so bad. This is so bad. I spent five bucks on the ticket. <laughs> uh, thank you, Silver, for your sacrifice for that one. Oh, my God. Uh, the NBC review for the movie of end of year will be much fun. So, yeah, anywho. <laughs> so, anywho. Uh, if you guys have any questions, concerns, or suggestions for the show, you can contact us at nbcshowgmail.com. You can also reach us on the Twitters. The show's Twitter account is at NBS Show. My personal Twitter account is at Norman Sanzo. Silver, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on the YouTubes under Silver Quill or After the Fact. You can find me on DeviantArt, MLP, hyphen silver, hyphen quill where I do Pinkie Pie Says Goodnight comics. I'm not sure when this will air, probably after the uh, after the holiday special is aired, but you can look at the full retrospective of all the Season 9 comics, including early releases. Lots of early releases. Wow, yeah. Oh, Wait, Season 9 comics or Season 8? Oh, Season 8. Yeah, we're coming up on Season 9. Season, season 8. Although, g- g- given the trend, I'm sure Season 9 will feature a lot of early releases too. Anywho... You can find me on Twitter under MLP Silver Quill. Just look for me te- teasing Safi about watching Star Wars. Ree! And Kisu Kisu. Ree! And every Wednesday on Equestria Daily, I will have written up a comic review or an editorial. <clears throat> awesome, awesome. Ree! Awesome, awesome. Uh, go do catch those guys because those are really informative. And yeah, if you are a follower of the comics but you've got no idea when it comes out, Silver does remind us when it comes out. E. And Seppi, where can the good people find you? Well, you can find me on Twitter going, You can't make me towards Silver. <laughs> and other than that, you'll see me drawing. And, and on my DA, you can also see me drawing art. And you can give me money by going to my coffee and looking up Anime Christie. That way I can continue drawing art. <laughs> Yay. Because money is a great motivator. True that. So if I fine you for not watching the Star Wars movies. Yeah, not gonna happen. I'll Whoa. just rip up the bill. Oh. Wow. We, we have, have a, a binding, binding contract. contract. <laughs> yeah, well, I'll burn them all. Well, then I'll see you in Star Wars court, young lady. Your defense has failed. <laughs> now witness the firepower of this fully armed and operational legal system. You can't charge me. I'm insane. I, I don't know anything that you're saying to me. <laughs> Hello, manga. So I win. <laughs> Hello, manga. I'm going to need you to deny Safi affection for two months. <laughs> That's 
fine. I've I've dealt with worse. <laughs> she says that now, but she'll miss the kisu kisu. Oh, I wow. hate you. <laughs> that's my definition of worse. <laughs> oh, maybe that's it. Maybe that's it. Until you watch Star Wars, lot Manka, you just have to say kisu kisu every time you see her. <laughs> uh, until she watches the Star Wars movies. I feel nothing. <laughs> By the way, Ladybug right now has gotten more awesome. <laughs> Ooh, more awesome. Mm-hmm. I refuse. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you say so. Oh, by the way, we still have that Pokemon thing to do. Right, but anyway, um, also please subscribe to us on iTunes, YouTube, and don't forget to press the bell icon to stay up to date. The Stitcher Radio and also like our Facebook page. You can also catch us on PonyvaLive.com. Uh, this episode right here, right now, it's also available on iTunes and Stitcher Radio. Uh, do subscribe to get us on the go. Yay. Awesome for working out in the Gaiam. Is that right, Silva? The Gaiam? Yes. Oh, yes, the Gaiam. Yes, the Gaiam, where people do stuff. Oh, the, oh, the Gaiam dimension. <laughs> yes. <laughs> if you like to support the show in this insanity, you can do so at patreon.com. With every support, you can... Get a week's early access to review and discussion podcast exclusive and deleted content. And a huge thank you from me. Talking about the thank yous, I would like to thank my stuff like Amy, Charles, Lucky Knight, Tristan, Starstream, Lurker Cat, and also Jeffrey. Thank you so much, guys. And you're great. Anyway, I have been Norman Sanzo. I'm the Silver Quill. And I am Grumpled. <laughs> Uh, so what was it, Grumpy? Yes. Uh, we'll guys catch you next week with another fun episode of the Mia Show. See ya. Hi, me familia. Bye. I'm gonna throw the margarita salt at you, Silver. Oh, I didn't know you were so salty. <laughs> exactly. Oh, are you assaulting me? <laughs> Both. Uh, but Zaffy, you have to go against the grain. <laughs> Uh, well, uh, looks like I just need to put my plate on because you guys are just full of sodium. Well, you know, it's because half is real salt to the earth. Maybe you should just turn on my Overwatch. <laughs>